Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about an open redirect vulnerability, what that means, and some ways to avoid it. Uh, anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so for explaining an open redirect vulnerability, I've set up a very silly web app. Let me just walk you through the code really quickly. Um, and this is this does all sorts of not great stuff, but it's intended to be very simple and readable so you can understand what's going on. Uh, so this is a simple Flask app. I have set up an index route. So if we start this app uh, and we open it in the browser, you can see that it takes us to a homepage and there's a login link. And that login link is going to, uh, or the login link is going to show if we're not logged in. I'm just representing logged in as a global variable. Of course, this is not realistic whatsoever. Uh, and if you're logged in, it'll print that you're logged in, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's an index page which says welcome to home and if we go to slash page one uh, You'll see that it says welcome to page one and either of those have a login link now a desirable thing With websites is if you have a logged out version and a logged in version is if you click on the login link on the logged out version It should take you back to the same page that you're already on and I've implemented that in a way that exposes this particular web app to an open redirect vulnerability. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second, um, but it does work. So if I click login right now, you'll see that it uh, made a request to the login URL, and then that redirected me by a 302 back to the page I was already on. So you can see I'm a non-page one and I'm now logged in. And the way login works is it's just um, set the global variable to true, and if there's a return URL, redirect. Otherwise, redirect to slash, which is just the home page. So very simple app, uh, but it has an open redirect vulnerability. So I want to show you what that looks like. I'm going to restart the app so that we're logged out again. Um, what an open redirect vulnerability is, is it's a way that you can trick a website to redirect to some unrelated website. Um, so ideally, in this login link case, it should always be redirecting back to some page that I own. Uh, but an attacker could change this URL, make it look like it's a legitimate URL on their website, and then redirect to something completely unrelated later. So maybe I have, you know, sent a phishing email, or maybe not not me personally, but one one has sent a phishing email that gives them a URL that looks like this. So return URL equals. Oh, let me put this on screen so you can see it. Return URL equals HTTPS example.com slash sketchy. And so they could maybe post this URL directly into some email and you click on it and you think that you're going to this website here. Of course, that's 127001 in this case, uh, but maybe it's, you know, mywebsite.com. Um, and you think you're going to that particular website, but instead it is redirecting to an unrelated website. And you'll see if I run this now, it has redirected me to example.com slash sketchy because I have not sanitized this input whatsoever. I've just trusted this return, all, return URL argument, which the user can modify in any way, shape, or form. Uh, okay, so I've kind of shown you the problem. You know, a user could... <laughs> A malicious actor could give you a URL that looks legit, but takes you to a sketchy place, and maybe maybe they use uh, a second level phishing on this to uh, get you to enter login credentials or something, or credit cards or something like that, uh, or maybe this downloads a virus, or who who knows what this external sketchy URL does. Uh, but it makes it look like your page is legitimate or their page is legitimate. Uh, so let's talk about a few ways to avoid open redirects. And the first, and I guess probably the most important is you need some way to sanitize this URL. Um, and I, I've, I've, I've worked at several web companies that have had this exact problem. Like this was a, a thing that we put a lot of effort into at Yelp, for instance. You know, Lyft has a similar issue on there, uh, or similar you know, thing that they have to solve. I don't, I don't want to say issue because <laughs> they're not vulnerable to this. Um, but basically any website that does this sort of return URL or redirect URL or, or that sort of state management needs to worry about this type of problem. And one way to avoid this, uh, and this doesn't always work for all cases, is to make sure that you're only redirecting to a particular allow list of URLs. Uh, so you know you, you only expect the home page or page one here. Uh, this doesn't really work that well because you probably have some amount of dynamic URLs or URL parameters or other stuff like that. Um, another thing that you could do is prevent any redirects to absolute URLs. So URLs that contain, you know, host, host and or port uh, require them to always be relative. This doesn't always fix the problems either because sometimes you could have 
a redirect that takes you to a page that you probably you know, might not want to be on in a particular way. Of course, they could just enter that in the browser too. Um, so that's that's another way. Uh, but the way that I found to be the most you know, comprehensive and avoids this entirely is to make this return URL some opaque value that the user can't modify and can't replicate. Uh, one way to do this is to encrypt it via a session token. Uh, and this is actually the approach that pre-commit CI uses. So if you're on like uh, install GitHub Python, if you wanted to see pre-commit CI for Python itself, they have it hooked up for TypeShed. And if you were to click log in here, I should expect to go back to this same page. If I do, oh, of course it's gonna log in through there. Let me do it through a browser I'm already logged in on. Um, have it open. I had, to, I had to look at the redirect docs to write that silly example. Uh, but yeah, if I'm on the Python page here and I click login, I want it to take back to the original URL. Um, you can't, can't really see it here, but if we inspect this element, you'll see that there's a sort of opaque token here. And this is generated using uh, Flask's session store token generation. There's a, there's a library called It's Dangerous, and it basically does some um, cryptography to generate uh, kind of an opaque token there. And you can actually, I think you can actually peer into this value, but you can't modify it. And that's the important part. You want to avoid the attacker from being able to modify uh, this value here. Um, but this stores the data that I need it to. And so once I have logged in here, you'll see that it has, it takes a while to log in. Uh, it has redirected me back. I'm still on the same page, but now I'm logged in. And so it has successfully done that while avoiding this being a open redirected. Uh, only redirects to a value that is specially stored uh, in this, you know, redirect token, this, this state token. Uh, but anyway, that's an open redirect as well as a few ways to avoid the problem. Uh, hopefully you found this interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.